Now that we're under contract, we need to complete the closing checklist and submit the loop to review so the closing manager can get to work doing everything they need to do to get things rolling, inspections, attorney, et cetera. So we'll come in our loop, we'll scroll down to closing document section and open up the buyer closing checklist. And here it is. So you'll see several fields. We're gonna go through this line by line, but it's helpful to have your offer to purchase open, the MLS listing open, and your buyer info in Boomtown open as we'll need info from all of those places to complete the checklist. So we're gonna start here, we'll put your name, and then the lead source, which will come from Boomtown, so that's from your sphere. The commission percentage, which comes from MLS, 10.4%. And then uh, referring agent info and that percentage as needed. And then come and then fill out this top section. So 1618 Cotton Gin Drive. 1618 Cotton Gin Drive, Clayton. Let's see. Just make sure we get the correct zip code 27527. And I'm in the wrong place. Oops, so I'm gonna copy that and put it right there. Property info, we're gonna take the MLS number directly from MLS. Pop that right here. I'm gonna take the square footage. The year 2002, right here. The square footage 1116. Then it is not occupied in this instance. There is a crawl space and it is a townhome. All the photo that you'll know will be helpful for the inspector, etc. Now, the client information is going to come from right here. So it's Liz Strickland, Smith in this case. You should have her address in her, her current address. It's usually in the lender letter where she currently lives. I'll take that right there. 383 East 7th Street. And that's Safford, Arizona. I accidentally deleted the text field there, so I'll just drop that back to the This is just in case we need the address later on. The attorney will also need it. Eight five five four six. Phone number, we have it right here in our big town, so we're just going to copy and paste. Email address is the same thing, we're just going to copy and paste. That way the closing manager can reach out to them. And it is contingent to sell because she needs to sell her property that's indicated in the offer purchase. Now we're going to take the seller's info from the offer, John and Jean Brockwell. Now I'm hopping back and forth here, so we'll be doing the same thing to get all the information you need. The listing agent information is right here in the MLS. So Ronnie Pate, I'm going to go ahead and copy his phone number because we're going to need that. Ronnie Pate, phone number here. I'm going to go back and just select his email. Copy and paste that really quickly and drop it in here. Sometimes you might need to change the font size so it fits in the box. Okay. He hasn't given me any indication that there's a closing assistant, so we don't need to worry about that. The closing date, you should know it, but you can pull it directly from the offer to purchase, 10-28-19. And then the closing attorney is your escrow agent right here. In most cases, unless the listing agency is the escrow agent, it's going to be the same as closing attorney, so Jackson Law. After using one of our typical attorneys or lenders, 
All you need to do is put the name here so the closing manager knows you don't need to put their contact in. But if for some reason you're using someone who's not on our preferred vendor list, then please go ahead and complete the rest of it. And then the lender is Andy, one of our preferred lenders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in there. Don't need to worry about his contact. Closing, as far as we know now, is going to be local. If your folks aren't gonna be in town, you need to arrange for a mail away, where that's where they send the documents for your folks to sign in front of the notary and mail back um, next day, so it closes the following day. That's what you would use in this situation. And make sure that you discuss that with everyone before, um, way before closing to make sure it's lined up. So we've got our top two areas filled out, as well as our agent info, and we're gonna move down to the actual contract information. So come back to the contract, all the information on the first page. You've got purchase price, due diligence, earnest money. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that out. Due diligence. The DD date on the second page of the contract, 10-21. Earnest money amount, which was 1500 There's no additional earnest money, so we're going to put no. Date doesn't apply. Holder of the earnest money is the escrow agent. In this case, the same as the attorney, Jackson Law. And personal property included. So typically, the big three, refrigerator, washer, dryer, if they're going to be included, this is where you're going to list it. In this instance, there is none, so we're just going to put in A. The loan type is conventional. Uh, the updated document says access type here. Um, and that is for the lockbox. So I'm just gonna slide this over because you'll see the new form will say it correctly. And this is just so the, um, the closing manager knows the entry type to let the inspector know so they know how to request access. And that, if you don't remember, is typically in the agent remarks, combo lockbox. Closing cost paid by seller. In this instance, there is some, and that's down in the contract. So let me just show you exactly who that is. Page nine right here, agreement to pay buyer expenses. That's closing cost, $2,500. So we're gonna just make sure that that's put right in here, 2,500. HOA is 125. And then list listing, sorry. See, so this is right here, 130 per month. There is no warranty, so we're going to put in a. The buyer isn't buying one of their own at this point for the contract, and the seller is providing one. And then the contract execution date that's the date that buyer and seller both complete the signatures, so the 29th. So all of this is finished now. Don't need to worry about this part. This is where we're giving the closing manager a heads up on what inspections are going to be dealt with and the general situation so they can make the appropriate um, and necessary steps to make sure they're taken. Um, so the utilities are on. We are going to be ordering the home inspection and this is all per the professional services disclosure, which is why we have it done first and then do the closing checklist. Order the home inspection for nurses, um, healthcare providers, teachers, Sometimes you can get a, a discount on the inspection. Just let April know if that applies, the closing manager. Order the pest inspection, she's going to be doing that. Not aware of any termite bond company, so we're gonna leave that out. She is gonna order the radon inspection, but not septic, not well, not roof, not HVAC, not survey. If you have a cash buyer and they want their own appraisal done, then we can order the appraisal for them. It's a lender, so the lender is going to handle that. We don't. And then a home warranty, we're not doing one of those. If you have another thing that you need her to handle, you can put right in there. We always want to tell folks that they're paying for the inspection at inspection and set that expectation. And then whether or not they're going to attend inspection so we can let the inspector know. In this case, no, because she's not going to be in town. This is for the closing manager. You can see where the closing manager is the agent. You don't need to worry about this section. Just make sure you fill this out so she knows exactly what to do. And then for your compliance, you need to make sure these things are handled or in Boomtown or in Dotland, I'm sorry. So you wanna enter the transaction in Boomtown like we have already. Again, the new closing checklist actually says transaction in SISU here. So I'm gonna add that. Yes, the buyer agency agreement is signed. 
There's no referral agreement in A, offer to purchase, signed. Comps, signed. Disclosure, signed. Mineral oil and gas rights, signed. This home does not, was not built before 1978, so lead-based paint does not apply. FHA does not apply. Additional provisions does not apply. WDIR is we, what we use for our VA folks, does not apply in this situation. There are no other addenda, like buyer possession before closing, et cetera. Professional services is taken care of. The wire fraud doesn't apply anymore. So we'll just say no. The images are in there for the DV and earnest money check. We have those in the loop. We're waiting for the receipt to be signed by everyone. So we can leave that out for now and come back and update when we receive those. So it's reflected here, the pending MLS, yes. And then these documents are in there as necessary, but we haven't gotten to that step yet. Again, this is just, all this needs to be done before closing, but we don't need to check it now because we haven't gotten to that step in the process yet. Power of attorney, we're not gonna need this. Then of course, we've got an open spot there for you, uh, just in case you need to add something else in there. So everything is checked that can or should be checked at this point. So we're going to save and we'll go back to our loop. I'm not gonna share it from there because now that we have all of those documents checked and in the loop that were included on the buyer closing checklist, We've already submitted to the lender and the attorney like we talked about, we can submit the loop for review. And this is for our closing round. I'm gonna make sure this information is in there. Hold on just a second. And then we just select all of these boxes for the closing manager. Make sure these all say buying review right here. Check them all and then say under contract. And this just lets the closing manager know where we are in the step. And then you hit submit. I need to add this. I need to upload that to the loop, but they, basically that's it. I have to sign that in person so it's not in there digitally. I'll go in and add that. If you have anything like this pop up, just make sure that your loop is ready to go and then it'll allow you to submit. And then that's all you really need to do. After that, you're off and running. Closing manager will start taking care of things. And basically you're waiting until the inspections are done. And then you're gonna review those and we'll talk due diligence later.